from black love to black power, the visibility of proud and successful black, gay, queer men across Native Sons platforms is priceless. Look around you. Look at this room. There was a time when we wouldn't dare be caught alive in a room like this, right? We would not be. It's spaces like this one that we have tonight that are incredibly meaningful, especially as our community faces relentless attacks on our humanity and all its platforms. I may not be on CNN, but I'm still a journalist, and let me tell you what's happening. All right? In 2023, there have been, already have been, more than 520 anti-LGBTQ plus pieces of legislation introduced in state legislations all across the country. Nearly half of those bills target our transgender and non-binary siblings. These bills range from banning gender-affirming care for transgender youth to banning drag performances. There's also been an avalanche of book bans attempting to censor stories that center us. So let's just be real. These book bans are rooted in anti-blackness, in transphobia, and queerphobia. 2022 Native Son Honoree George M. Johnson <laughs> and the author of All Boys Own Hood has faced unyielding attacks simply because of their books. Their books focuses on their lived experiences. The attacks are coming from all fronts. All fronts. Too many, corporate, too many corporations have lacked the courage to stand up against extremist demands to discriminate against us. Some corporations have gone as far as removing pride gear and decorations from their stores. And I think they, you know, they pair those actions with some type of empty statement claiming that they still respect our communities. But I want you to hear this story because history, if it doesn't repeat, it rhymes, right? After Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. won the Nobel Peace Prize, this was back in 1964, many businesses in Atlanta remained apprehensive about outwardly celebrating the accomplishment, that accomplishment due to the polarization, due to the divide in the nation at the time. However, Atlanta's mayor at the time, Ivan Allen Jr., approached the former CEO of Coca-Cola, his name was Robert Woodruff. And he asked him to make some calls. And boy, did he make some calls. He called Coca-Cola, CEO at the time, it was J. Paul Austin, and he asked him for his support. J. Paul Austin proceeded to effectively tell local business leaders, if you don't come out and support Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., we're going to have to move Coca-Cola out of Atlanta. What do you think they did? The event was sold out. So look at Coca-Cola today. You can pick up any drink, and somebody said, can you, can you give me a Coke? You could be drinking Dr. Pepper or Sprite or whatever, or Tab, or, you know, where I'm old. <laughs> and people still call it a Coke or Coca-Cola, right? That's like a Kleenex. The tissue is a Kleenex. Copies of Xerox. Because, look at Coca-Cola today, a household name, an industry leader, because when things felt hard, they stepped up and they did what was right. Corporations today should be inspired to act on the side of justice and equality and never concede the demands of a bigoted minority whose actions speak louder than words. As the great James Baldwin, one of my personal heroes, would say, I can't believe what you say because I see what you what do. You do. There is a consequential power we have when we tell our stories on our own terms. And there are many people doing everything they can to silence us. We have to be vigilant. We will not allow them to succeed. It does not matter how many bills they introduce, we cannot and will not be legislated out of existence. We are here. We are queer. Get used to it. <laughs>